Commander Eubank, thank you very much, and, and I'd like to thank you and the National President uh, Barnes uh, for your hard work on behalf of this fine organization. i uh, also like to congratulate the incoming National Commander, Richard DeNoyer, and uh, the new National President, Gwen Rankin, who will sure, yeah, they're going to continue to carry that VFW banner high. Let me just say howdy and welcome to Texas. Yeah, you think about it, Texas is a natural fit for the VFW. Uh, our state, this city in particular, as Mayor Castro shared with you, has a deep connection to our nation's military. We're also home to a great deal of veterans of our foreign wars. My father shares with me, as he was on leave in August of 1945, hearing the news that he would not be sent to the Pacific was quite a celebration in the city streets of San Antonio. My dad was a tail gunner in World War II. He flew 35 missions over Nazi-held Germany in 1944 and 45. He helped liberate millions from tyranny. When he came home, he didn't seek acclaim or credit. He just wanted to live in peace and freedom. Help farm or just farm a little corner of land in Paint Creek, Texas. His story's not unique. Indeed, his story was, if anything, very representative of our entire generation, the greatest generation, who know all about place and country and community ahead of self. You know, often we speak in loving terms about that greatest generation, as we should. But I want to say a word about a younger generation of heroes. They went to war in a time of strife at home. They did incredibly tough duty, not knowing at times when the enemy lurked amongst them in the civilian population. They were called to war as, I should say, they were called to war that our leaders were not prepared to win because they were not prepared to use the full force of the United States military once they sent their sons into battle. You know these heroes because they sit among you today. You are the American heroes of Vietnam, and I salute you. As a former Air Force pilot, I had the great privilege to fly TAC airlifters around the globe from 1972 to 1977. I know the credo of, of survivors of war that only the heroes are the ones who never make it home. But in my eyes, you all are heroes, every one of you. I was never, thank you. I was never called into battle, but I know some of the names on the wall, including some who attended my beloved Texas A&M Many of you and many across this country have visited the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall to find the name of a loved one inscribed upon it. But for younger generations, I believe there needs to be a stronger connection to those heroes that we recognize. That's why I was the very first governor to publicly support the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Education Center. The Education Center aims to put a picture and a story to each of those names on that wall. And in doing so, it tells future generations that Americans, just like them, from their hometowns, from their way of life, left it all behind to preserve freedom for the people of Vietnam. 
that Vietnam Veterans Memorial with 58,260 names etched in black stands as a stark reminder of the cost of war. It reminds us that a president should never send our sons and daughters into war without a plan to win and the resources to make that possible. It's a dangerous world that we live in today. Our enemies often don't wear uniforms or swear allegiance to a particular flag, but instead to an ideology of hatred. It's the 10th anniversary of the attacks of 911 approach. We must renew our commitment to taking the fight to the enemy wherever they are before they strike at home. I do not believe I do not believe that America should fall subject to a foreign policy of military adventurism. We should only risk shedding American blood and spending American treasure when our vital interests are threatened. And we should always look to build coalitions among the nations to protect the mutual interests of freedom-loving people. It's not our interest to go it alone. We respect our allies, and we must always seek to engage them in military missions. At the same time, we must be willing to act when it is time to act. We cannot concede the moral authority of our nation to multilateral debating societies. And when our interests are threatened, American soldiers should be led by American commanders. I say this because we owe to them and to their loved ones the commitment of any war is led by the country with the most advanced technology and the best training. We have the best fighting force in the world. We have a generation of heroes that love this nation who are willing to sacrifice all that many may be free. The men and women of the United States military are the greatest ambassadors of freedom that this world has ever seen. That's why when we send them to war, we must give them every resource and every weapon to help them succeed. And when they come home, some of them physically scarred, many more scarred in ways that don't show on the surface. We must devote whatever resources are needed to help them heal and live fulfilling lives. A great nation cannot turn its eye away from its wounded warriors. We should honor them with the best health care possible, with help transitioning back into civilian life, and with jobs. It anguishes me to see young men and women come home scarred, feeling isolated, unable to cope with what they've experienced. These are our precious sons and daughters. They are our nation's newest generation of heroes. They are our own flesh and blood. We must take care of them every one of them. And today I'm really proud to come here to this convention to announce in Texas a new program 
that will be run by the Texas Veterans Commission. It will be referred to as Housing for Texas Heroes. And we're making $3 million in grants available to help Texas veterans build, rehabilitate, rent their homes, possibly renovate them to the needs that have been created by a service-related disability. Housing for Heroes will help ensure veterans and their families have adequate housing as they ease back into civilian life and enjoy the blessings of liberty they earned with their valor and their sacrifice. Let me finish with a commendation. A commendation to all of you for your sacrifices, your courage, your leadership, and I hope you have an enjoyable and a productive convention. I wish, I wish you the best of luck as you go home and you continue to improve the communities that each of you are from. And I pray that God continues to bless you and through you, he continues to bless this great country that we love. Thank you all for coming.